hand of thy power was upon me, upon me. and carried me out in the spirit of a high spirit of a high. Set me down in the midst of the valley, of the valley, of the valley which was full of bones. Caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the valley, and lo, and all of the hit, they were very dry. Well, they've been there many. He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O oh, thy power, only thou knowest. Only you know that. He said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. Well, from the Babylon. Land of your captivity that bred to this hateful heart and activity. activity. As you deny Satan got you by the collar, you risk your mama for a couple dollars. Welcome to Babylon. This ain't your home, you a vagabond. About to send hot beans out of stolen Avalon. The women you choose in close proximity. Headed up the march, the same we're about to kill a seed. Laying down with a lead, lead, heartless. Got them in your wicked tinsel, yanking out cartilage. Then you wonder why nothing never worked out for you. Punch them back for the devil, cause the father don't know you. Running like this your job, sending kids to know not. That it's them very sins to keep you deader than the dog. Nah, deception is the main word that ain't of your heart. Not knowing you the chosen, so the bone collection don't stop. Crisis, but utterly lifeless. Look how they land they Try it out, all cry out. Look how they stand and kick one. Which one? Pick one. They ain't gonna feel it. They did. Mind, body, spirit. Can you make these dry bones live? Show them the transgression. Show them what the bones did. Get it in. Can you make these dry bones live? Well, give them their legacy. Show them who their bones is. Who they broke is. Okay. China, China, China bring peace. They see it as a fight. My people in the dark, I'm just trying to bring some light. The most high said, tell them that they ain't living right. Tell them dry bones gone. And go and get a light. You got a soul, but it's dead fiend. And you gasping for air. Yeah. Wouldn't say you suffocate. Cause to suffocate, you gotta first have some type of breath in you. If you don't put the skin on, you can't find life's meaning. Cause your skeleton looks no different from the heathen. What you searching for is what the father bringing. The whole world starving, cause ain't nobody eating. I'm connected to the father, no dial up. I used to be in the valley with the pile up. It's a new me. It'll be Skeletor's my profile pick if you put my old file up. Crisis, so utterly lifeless. Look how they landing. Try it out, all cried out. Look how they standing. Kick one, which one? Pick one. It doesn't matter. They did. Mind, body, get spirit. Get out. Can you make these dry bones live? Show them the transgression. Show them what they bones did. Get it in. Can you make these dry bones live? Well, give them they like to seek and heritage. Show them why it is what it is. Can you make these dry bones live? Show them the transgression. 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 Yeah. Can you make these dry bones live? So I prophesied as I was committed there, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, everything got was shaken, and the bones start coming together, bone to its bone, one bone connected to another bone connected to another bone, and as I beheld, flesh came upon them, and their skin covered them above, there was no breath in them, then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy and say to the wind, thus saith Baha'i, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain bones, that they may live, so I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they live, and they live, and they live, and they stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Y'all go put that thing in your playlist. But watch this. June 1st, family, we back in concert. Dallas, Texas. We're just right outside of Dallas, Texas. Royal Nation concert. Beautiful army army. Now we'll be in the building. Man, let go. You know your boy Peas is going to be in the building. Let go. Yeah, man. Get your tickets today at the key is me.org. That's the key is me.org. Real dude in the building and many other talented brothers and sisters. I know I can value those. Turn up season to June 1st. Mesquite, Texas at the Mesquite Artist Center. Just outside of Dallas, Texas. Man, let go. Real. June.
first thing we need to know is that the Father ain't answering everybody's prayers. John 15 and 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If you follow the word, that's Christ who said that. Get it? Got it? Good. Mark 11, 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you shall have them. Believe that you will receive. That's another problem most of us have. We have the most high for assistance so we continue to stress over it. Matthew 26 and 41, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Most people don't want to be wicked, but that flesh is a problem, man. So pray against temptation. James 5 and 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Surround yourself with righteous people. The collective prayers of the righteous moves to spirit. Luke 18 and 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that man ought to pray and not to faint. Christ said that too. Through the good, bad, and ugly, we must pray. Psalms 34 and 17, the righteous cry and the most high hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles. The righteous, the most high saves the righteous. The righteous follows the commandments. Luke 11 and 9, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. There's power in prayer. Against your enemies. Psalms 109 and 4. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. Prayer is a superpower that we all have, but few use it righteously. Real truth. Yo, Shalawan family, our praise is to Kahi, the Ruach Kadash, the Holy Spirit, our praises to Anoki said, that's a higher key said, the great I am loving kindness, our praises to most of the Lamb, our minister of forgiveness, Yasha, our savior, welcome to another installment of Clear Eyes, No Visine, yo, yo, this life can be hard. You can be around a group of people and still feel lonely. You can have a microphone and still not be heard. Yo, this life can be hard. But that's not how life is meant to be. The Lord has been telling me for a long time that he wants to be my friend. It is. He wants to be your friend. When I say me, understand I'm talking about us, right? He wants to be my friend. He wants to be the one I confide in about everything. He is always with me. He will always teach me if I'm always ready to learn. A feeling of loneliness is a reflection of my relationship with him. A feeling of not being heard is a reflection of my relationship with him. The Lord has been telling me this for a long time. Showing me this for a long time. That's a spiritual relationship. We were raised up in such a carnal environment that this type of relationship is foreign to us. It's foreign to me. I'm not saying that hearing the spirit is foreign to me. No, I hear the spirit and I hear the spirit often. But the relationship the Lord has been asking for me is a relationship the scriptures call praying without ceasing. Making the Messiah part of every one of my decisions. It's a spiritual relationship that will make all my physical relationships better. It takes humility, selflessness, and a whole lot of love. Huh? Praying without ceasing. It's easier said than done, though. Believe me, I know. That's why he's been telling me for a long time to do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was the way of the righteous ancients, right? That's how they rocked out. And nobody did it more thoroughly than Yasakad and Kava. Adam and Eve. They knew Christ. They knew Christ that is in all things. They knew him. They knew the Christ that's in all things. That's who they knew, right? Yasakai went to the Lord about everything. He knew him. If Moses said it, Kava believed him. She knew him. They prayed without ceasing because the one time they didn't do it, it was so costly. You did. 
In this episode, Yasakai and Kava, Adam and Eve will be rewarded for their steadfastness. We get to read about Yasakai and Kava and how their walk on this earth ended. This is episode 27 in our Remembrance of Enoch series. We are in the book of Remembrance of Enoch, chapter 13. We are starting in verse 1. All through this series, family, we have gotten a view of the ancients from a more intimate perspective than we've been used to. We've read about Yasakai and Kava's concept of God. We've read about how they learned on Mosa, or my bad, how they leaned on Mosa when they entered the temple world. Looking at their lives, we get a look at praying without ceasing. Let's get started, family. First, we're going to read Revelation 3, 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see, huh? and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Clear eyes, no rising family. Let it get it. But like I said earlier, we are in the book of remembrance of Enoch chapter 13, verse 1. Let's read that. Huh? That's um, the book of Enoch. The book of remembrance of Enoch chapter 13, verse 1. Let's go. And it came to pass that after Enoch divided the sons of men according to the measure of the sanctity and holiness of of marriage, the people of Ma'in prospered, and for the first time the righteous children of Anoki said became truly a people who were strong in their family bonds, and they walked together in community. That's what walking in the sanctity of marriage did for Enoch's community family. The sanctity of marriage is compassion and charity for all creation. Huh? Let's read verse 2. And by all of the profound acts of dividing in the midst of creation, the righteousness and the dignity of the handiwork of Anoki said began to gain the upper hand. And the reality of the value of acting with honor before one another in creation and the creator became very clear in the hearts of the righteous. Let's read, let's read verse 3 again. Y'all watch this. And the reality of the value of acting with honor before one another and creation and the creator became the very clear became very clear in the hearts of the righteous there's value in acting honorable in front of our fellows in front of creation in front of the most high there's value family in behaving honorably huh verse four but the wicked were filled with a sense of dishonor and they had to choose more and more clearly to associate themselves with the feelings of guilt and the perplexities of shame because of the divisions that were brought about by Enoch. It was a spiritual change in the earth because of what Enoch did. Huh? If y'all missed the last episode, y'all go check it out and see what Enoch established and how he established it. Roots and culture, family. Huh? Verse 5. And thus all of the souls in creation, both among the watchers and among men, found themselves subject to the truth regarding the purpose of the Holy Great One in the course of man in these divisions upon the earth began to be well marked and set in place for the duration of the course of the earth. These was big things the Lord set in place through Enoch. Ignorance was no longer an excuse. The truth is known and being wicked is a choice. Verse 6, And it came to pass after those days that the Eric Kodeshi firmly laid claim to Yasakai and Kava, for when all of the righteous together in the midst of the use of the element of righteousness identified them to, to the Eric Kodeshi as the perfect model of the fulfillment of the desires of Enoki said, and that they were the object of their creation in the midst of the temple world. The love of the Eric Kodeshi could not be constrained. And all the watchers of holiness spoke to one another concerning them, and they kept track of them day and night, and they followed them and hovered over them like a mother bird with her young. That's how the Eric Kodeshi would do us when we fully walk in the sanctity of marriage. The holy watchers wouldn't let nothing happen to Yasakai and Kava, Adam and Eve, nothing. It said they were hovering over them like a mother bird. The Eric Kodeshi loved Yasakai and Kava at a high level. The Eric Kodeshi creation wants to love all of us the same way. Huh? 
verse 8. And finally, the forces of their yearning and of their love for Yasekai and Kaira burst forth in quiet power. And most of the land became the spokesman for their Kodeshi. And in the night, in the dwelling place of Baraka, the Lord appeared. And he said to her, Baraka, my daughter. And she said, Lord, here am I. And the Lord said, be not alarmed. Be not alarmed at that which I will say to you. My father longs to dwell once again with your old parents in Eden. And the car was, has gone out from the Erekodeshi, summoning them back home. Be not afraid, for they will heed the call, but rejoice, for the inheritance of Gabriel is at hand, and the Lord withdrew from before Baraka. Amazing, y'all. So Yasekai and Kyra's marriage was in such a perpetual state of sanctity that Moses had to give the Erekodeshi the green light to call them back to Eden. It was a spiritual call. And the Lord said they was going to answer all. They going to take heed. They had a relationship with creation. So they understood when Eric Kodeshi would call. The Lord appeared to Baraka, the worshiper, Enoch's mama. He would let her know so the people wouldn't be too alarmed, right? That was an act of compassion. This is Yasakad and Kyle for Adam and Eve. This would be such a bittersweet moment for the people. Huh? Verse 9. And the Lord appeared also to the others, or also to others, and Edney, and Adai, and her children beheld him, and heard the same words as Baraka. And there were others who were visited by the Lord. And in the morning they all marveled at that which they had heard. And it came to pass as they spoke of these things to one another, Azura and Sephi sent word for Barak and Edney to come to them. And they also had a tale to tell of the visit of most of the lamb to them. And they said he came to comfort them, but they could not tell what it meant. And they were very old, and Azura could hardly see, and Barak was kind to them. I ain't hold up. So look, y'all, Azura and Sephi were twin sisters, huh? Azura was Seth's wife, and Sephi was Mattaniah's wife, who we know from the Bible is Abel. We also read about them early in the series. So Mosa also appeared to them. But they were much older and didn't really understand the meaning of the visit. Let's start verse 11 over. And they were very old. And Azura could hardly see. And Baraka was kind to them. And she told them that with the she told them that with the division of the sons of men, using Yasakai and Kava as the element of righteousness, the seventh generation was now complete. And the women told them that they now must let their old parents go, according to the covenant that Moses made with them in the brook Baca in the valley of Yoash. We read about the covenant of Moses made with Yasakai in the episode titled The First great division that thing was titled the first great division the lord told yasakai that he was not responsible for the ones of his children who chose to be wicked in fact the lord told yasakai yasakai he wasn't the father of those children huh Mosa also promised yasakai that all of yasakai's righteous children would one day return to eden huh so that's what they're telling azura and sephi right there that they must the, the most of us saying that they must let them go to fulfill this said covenant. Yeah, they, this promise the father gave to Yasakai. Let's keep reading. And they conferred together and they all determined that they would say nothing to Yasakai and Kavu. But when the sun was up, the children reported that their old parents could not be found. They had already dipped. They was gone. You know? Verse 13, and it came to pass that Mahuja set himself to, to see concerning them. Mahuja was Enoch's father. He went to try to determine where Yatsakai and Kava went. Right? It's the, it's the first parents. Ain't gonna just be letting them walk around or walk around and about it. They protect them, right? Let's keep reading. Verse 13. And it came to pass that Mahuja set himself to seek concerning them, and he found the signs upon the earth that they went eastward along the riverbank. Y'all remember Enoch's father, Mahuja, was a master hunter, expert tracker. He could easily determine which way they went. Huh? Let's keep reading. And when Baraka heard of it, she exclaimed that they intended to walk together to go all of the way to the oaks of the back. And it was too far for them. And such a long journey was not safe. And she called for Majidad. And she called for Majidad and Enoch. And Mahuja showed them the signs upon the ground for they could not let them go. 
without knowing concerning their welfare. Mama Baraka, young Mama Baraka would not having the oldest people on the earth make that journey unattended. No, sir. Huh? Verse 14, and it came to pass that Amajah dad gathered his band together and they followed after them. And when they had when they had their old parents in sight, they were discreet. And they, and they did not let them know they were watching over them. And these strong men were amazed at how far they had traveled. And they determined that they must have left in the night. Immediately after the Lord visited the woman of Bethmala, visited the women of Bethmala. Okay, y'all, so look. So Amaji Dad and his crew went to look after Yasakai and Kaifa, right? Amaji Dad is Enoch's son, and he has a crew of expert trackers, men who can blend in with their Kodeshi. When they find Yasakai and Kaifa, they were amazed at how far this aged couple had traveled. Amaji Dad and his wife, my bad, Amaji Dad and his men, y'all, did not let Yasakai and Kaifa know they were following them. They just watched over them from a distance. Let's keep reading. Verse 15. And it came to pass that our first parents traveled on the south side of the stream called Simca. And they followed it until after some days they came to the branch in the river that came down from the encampment of Nod. And they could be seen moving carefully along with Yasakad helping Kaaba as they went. Yasakad is helping Kaaba as they went, bruh. They was traveling for days. This was a real journey. You know, the spirit called him and this, man, if this older couple making this trip, they the oldest people in the world, Craig. <laughs> you know they was called. You know they was called by the spirit if they made that journey. Huh? They were now just a little ways from their original encampment of Nod. Huh? Days. It's old folks, y'all. Verse 16. Now in Bethmala, when Azura heard the reports of the children, she went straightway to the dwelling place of her parents. And they were indeed nowhere to be found. And she found the Kelly of her mother. And it was in that, it was, and it was in the usual place for it. And when she saw it, she fell down on her knees. And she held the Kelly close to her. And she wept. And she knew that if her mother had left her Kelly, she had indeed set out to return to Eden. For her mother did not anticipate fear to be in Eden. And she knew she would not see her again in this life. Wow. What a moment, huh? Azura, who is Seth's wife, was also the daughter of Yasakai and Kaifa, Adam and Eve. When she saw her mother's Kelly, she knew her mama was headed back to Eden. Her mama never left and went on any long journey without her Kelly. It was spiritual protection for fear. We learned about a Kelly in our episode titled Spiritual Warfare. We saw uh, Brother Enoch use a Kelly in the ceremony to um, establish the sanct um, sanctity of marriage as a protection element. We read about that in our last episode of this series. Huh? The sanctity of marriage part four. The, uh, what I named that thing is um, the institution. Huh? We learned about that there. Azura wept. She knew she would never see her parents again in this life. Huh? Wow. It just It's just amazing to learn about these spiritual elements and how important it was for our forefathers to have on them. They understood that creation was alive. They understood the relationship. They, they understood their relationship with most and they understood when the spirit was speaking to them. Man, and the Lord wants that same relationship with us right now. Right, right now. Huh? Verse 17. And it came to pass that the men following Yasakad and Kava stopped each night and remained discreet in their watch care over their parents. And they found that they did not arise in the morning to travel on until the sun was well up. So the man became accustomed to be in no hurry to resume their travels each day. And they kept their old parents in sight all day long. And after many days, they came to the encampment of Nod. And Yasakad and Kava did not pause to stay the night. They did not pause to stay the night there as Amaji Dad had, had supposed what they went on. And the men settled in to sleep at the borders of Nod. So Amaji Dad and his crew follow Yasakai and Kaifa all the way back to their original encampment of Nod, right? Amaji Dad thought they would stay there for the night. So he and his crew stayed the night at the border of the encampment of Nod, you know, getting their distance and their respect. It's watching over them. But Yasakai and Kaifa kept on trucking. They was on a mission. The same mission they've been on their whole life. 
right? Verse 19. And in the morning, when they again took up to follow them, they found this, this talking about Amajah dad and his crew. And, and in the morning, when they again took up to follow them, they found that they were already gone and they hastened themselves forward and they found their tracks went between the oaks of Patak and their tracks were seen no more. And these men were hunters of very great skill and they knew their signs upon the ground were no more. Huh. When Amaji dad and his crew got up, they noticed Yasakai and Kava were already gone. Huh? They followed their tracks trying to catch up and they followed their tracks straight through the Oaks of Patak. Y'all heard what Benalene said. They were expert trackers. So when Yasakai and Kava's tracks disappeared through the Oaks of, pa Oaks of Patak, they disappeared. Huh? Remember we learned about the Oaks of Patak. That's, that's where Yasakai and Kava came out of Eden. When they were while just walking, you know, trying to find where their new home, not knowing they're about to be expelled out of Eden for good, right? When they walked through those trees, everything changed. And they tried to walk back and they, they, they couldn't. They couldn't go back to Eden. But now we see Amaji died and his crew, they done followed them, they watched their tracks go back through those oaks of Patak. And it looks like this time they were able to go back to Eden, huh? Verse 20, and I saw with Urim, my dear old parents, as they went. And it was marvelous. And it was a marvelous thing to me that they went so long with very little eat, with very little to eat. And yet in their old age, they seemed to gain strength as they drew closer to the Oaks of Patak. And it was just in the dimness of the first light of day that they arrived at the gateway to heaven. And the brilliance of the presence of Anoki said, Anoki said, lighted up their way. And I think I saw them to be younger, but I could not tell. And Anoki said we're sitting there, leaning up against the northernmost oak, and it was plain that they were expecting him to be there. And as they approached, they slowed down, and they went forward gently. And Anoki said a rose to greet them, and he handed Kava a yellow rose, and they called him Father. And they took his hands, and they walked up the hill, and out of sight. Man, yo, if y'all been following this series from the beginning, man. Man, you you remember when when um, Yasakai and Kava just left Eden? The things they felt, and uh, when when, when Yasakai's children, some of them were starting to become evil. The things they felt, right? Man, them two love the Lord. They love to be in the presence of the Lord, and so to see after that long journey, they ain't have no life like we got. Oh, they live for hundreds of years waiting to get back to eating so just when i'm reading that the first time i read this you know just being into the book just into the story man i see that they made a home like man praise the most high man he's true he is to watch watch how true he is watch how true he is we we'll keep going and anoki said um was waiting for them right you see when, when, before we start reading what was p game anoki said we're waiting for them at the oaks of the dock huh that's a it's a, it's a beautiful end to a long journey <laughs> Not just that final journey, but the long journey of life that they went through, right? And we read, and Noki said was waiting there with a yellow rose for Kava, right? It was a yellow rose that caught Kava's attention when her and Yasaka went to retrieve that flower. They, they went through those oaks of Pathak and left Eden. That's what they saw. They saw the flowers. They walked through the oaks and whoop! The yellow rose was one of the espousal gifts Yasa gave, Yasaka gave to Kava. So that that yellow rose is very significant. Let's go back to chapter seven. We're gonna see. Let's get a precept. We will stay in the book. Remembers Enoch. We'll go back to chapter seven, verse fifty-one. Right? Kava just uh, picked her, uh, pricked her finger on a rose. Right? She had never felt pain or ever seen or ever even seen her own blood. Moses just came and healed her. Let's read. And the Lord touched her. To heal her. This is chapter 7 of the book of Numbers, Enoch, verse 51. And the Lord touched her to heal her, and he instructed them with, the, with regard to how they must eat that which grows upon plants with thorns. And the Lord picked the yellow rose, and he handed it to Kaffa, and he said, Be not afraid, for I will establish, the, establish you on the earth, and I will raise you up in rich happiness, and you stand before me as a sure foundation in righteousness. He handed Kava a yellow rose and told her, be not afraid and promise you will be a foundation of righteousness. Huh? 
foundation of righteousness. That's what we're talking about. That's what the whole last episode was about. It was telling us that Yasukai and Kava were the example of the sanctity of marriage and marriage. Foundation of righteousness. Earlier we heard that um, all seven um, generations, the first seven generations established all righteousness. And those were the generations of Yasukai and Kava when they walked the earth. They were part of establishing all righteousness. You feel me? The foundation of righteousness. That's what they, uh, that's what they were. That's what she was, and that's what the Most High promised her. So when she was walking up to Anoki, he said at the Oaks of Pathak, he was holding a yellow rose. Anoki said, always keeps his promises. Our praises. We are back in chapter 13. No, let's go back to chapter 13 in the Book of Remembrance of Enoch, verse 23. Let's read that. And at that moment, the sun was seen to show itself to those of the east, and it was the first day of the year. Y'all see that? It was the first day of the year when Yasakai and Kava came out of Eden. And it was the first day of the year when Yasakai and Kava went back to Eden. Y'all pay attention here. Read. And the sons of Anoki said was triumphant on that day. And the son of Anoki said was triumphant on that day. What day? The fourth day. Read. And the son of Anoki said was triumphant on that day for the handiwork of his loving kindness returned to their father and to Eden out of the temple world in the full purity of the holiness of elder and this occurred because of the ability of most of the lamb to forgive and to restore and it was the fourth day of the week because the fourth advocacy of our redeemer was to join man with the Noki said through element hmm. the most high actually dwells in us the father and the son both actually dwell in us the fourth advocacy was modes of christ developing a way the, that all pure the, the, the all pure holy and Oki said could dwell in the same vessel as sinful man you can read about the fourth advocacy of christ in second achi that's the book of remembrance of achi the second book of achi chapter 6 verses 63 through 90 <laughs> powerful stuff though y'all y'all go check that thing out let's keep reading though verse 24 and also because on the fourth day in creation the gift messiah gave his father was to overcome the struggles of life and when they went back to eden they had indeed endured to overcome and to find their way their way back into the arms of their father oh, y'all look our lives were gifts Mozart, christ gave to the father you are a gift to an he said the most high ahaya one gift the Messiah gave to Anoki said was to overcome the struggles of life. When Yasakai and Kava met, Anoki said at the Oaks of Pathak, he, Anoki said, and them experienced that gift of overcoming the struggles of life. Every one of us that make it back to the kingdom, Anoki said, going to be receiving that gift from Mozart through us by the way we lived our life. A gift to overcome the struggles of life. Verse 25, and another gift Messiah gave his father on the fourth day of creation in their behalf was the bread of life. And they had been sustained and protected and washed over to their return to Eden. What is the bread of life? Huh? The bread of life is Christ in all things. They had been sustained and protected and washed over. We read about that last week. That's what the Eric Kodeshi lived to do. They live to protect us by using some aspect of Christ that defines them, right? So that's the bread of life. Christ in their condition, right? Let's read verse 25 again. And another gift Messiah gave his father on the fourth day of creation in their behalf was the bread of life. And they had been sustained and protected and washed over until their return to Eden. You see that, y'all? They had been sustained and protected and washed over until their return to Eden. That's what the bread of life does. That is part of the religion of Shabuah, the true ancient way of Israel. So when we live out our lives experiencing the bread of life, the Most High is also experiencing it with us. Therefore, we are responsible for him receiving that gift. Verse 26, and again, the third gift Messiah gave his father on the fourth day of creation was the ability of Anoki said to reveal himself to them. And it is plain that he accomplished it for they found him fully and took his hands 
at last. Woo. Yasukai and Kava lived a life that made it possible for Anoki said to reveal himself to them, which is a gift to the Father. A gift we are responsible for. Huh? We are responsible for the Father receiving that gift by us living a righteous life. Verse 27. And further, all of the sweet things Anoki said had made for them on the fourth day of creation were richly fulfilled in their creation. Remember, everything was created for us, y'all. So when we live a virtuous life, a righteous life, when I say a righteous life, I mean a, a life where we all reconnect, that's Jew and Gentile, to our spiritual heritage. A heritage where we have a relationship with their Kodesh creation. When we live out our days like that, creation feels like they lived out their creative purpose to sustain and nourish us. Let's start verse 27 over. And further, all of the sweet things Noki said had made for them on the fourth day of creation were richly fulfilled in their creation. On the fourth day of the week, and the rocks of Simca, and the waters of the Aral Sea, or the Aral Sea, and the grass of the Ree of Kava, and the rose, and the oaks of Padak were all very well pleased. And these five things were created on the fourth day. <laughs> creation is alive, family. And creation also rejoiced with, with Yasukai and Kava for their return to Eden. Yeah. Creation is rooted for us. Remember we talked about that in the last uh, episode? It, when, when creation sees us walking outside of the Tennessee of Mary, they are rooting for us to repent. They just know we're going to repent. They just knew Yasukai and Kava was going to make it back to Eden. Verse 28. And it was 279 years since they had left Eden. And they dwelt in Ma'in with their children nine years. And at the fulfillment of the covenant of Gabriel, all of their Kodesh rejoiced, and the love of Anoki said was fulfilled in them fully, and the great grasslands of Anak shook, and the grass swayed with gladness. Creation is alive, family. Huh? Let's keep reading, verse 29. And in those moments, the joy of it overshadowed any acts of the wicked. And although many of the children of men had died before this day, there was something in the lives of Yasakad and Kapha that proclaimed complete fulfillment in the living souls of creation. Yo, this was a big moment in the course of the earth. Y'all hear me? This was a big moment in the course of the earth. Yasukai and Kava left an example for mankind to follow. An example that's been restored by these books. Let's read. And the example of their lives had a profound effect upon their Kodeshi. For after these things, it seemed they were much more willing to abandon the wicked and to ignore their requests. <laughs> Y'all see that? Their Kodeshi better understood what the righteous were supposed to look like. Because these two wonderful people, huh? Because of these two wonderful people. So the Eric Kadeshi could also quickly discern the truly wicked. You remember that was the purpose of why Enoch established the sanctity of marriage on earth. Because the Eric Kodeshi looked at all of mankind as the object of creation. So they really couldn't tell who was wicked or not. So Enoch had to establish something with the Eric Kodeshi so they can realize who was who. And when that was established, when Eric Kodesh looked at Yasukai and Kava, they knew what it was. They knew what righteousness looked like in human beings. They knew they already knew what it looked like, but that they knew how to discern between who was doing it and not. They it, Enoch gave them a guideline, something to follow. Huh? Verse 30. And it came to pass after these things, Amajidad and his band returned home and they rehearsed all that had happened. And many thought that their old parents had passed away like unto Chasing. And others stopped, they did not they did not die, but passed straight into Eden. Imagine that Enoch's son had to come and give the people the scoop, y'all. You know how we do rumors was already circulating. They, 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 they didn't know what was going on. Verse 31. And in the days that followed, Abiathar passed away, and Seth and all the children of Yasukai. So, so now after Yasukai and Kyra went back, time is passing by, right? Folks is dying now of old age. Abiathar, we read about him in the episode titled Establishing Yod. Abiathar did a ceremony or a worship, like something similar to what Enoch did in the last episode, because y'all, that was our spiritual culture. That was our heritage. That's how we establish things with the Father. 
and Abiathar in his ceremony established that the righteous will always find their spouse among the righteous. So when you gave, well, so when you give your life to the Most High, right? When you gave your life to the Most High, huh? Trust your spouse did as well, or it's going too soon, right? The brother Abiathar established that. Yasakad and Kava's son, Seth, passed away. It said all the children of Yasakad and Kava passed away. Right? They're, you know, their they're first children. Let's keep reading. And in these days, the children of Ma'in were taught the meaning of life and death and the truth of Eden. Dying of old age was starting to become a regular thing. So different life and afterlife, afterlife lessons were learned because of this new reality. Right? Verse 32, and it came to pass that Azura and Sephi passed from this world, embracing one another, and their last words were heard to be their words for greeting their mother. <laughs> There's an afterlife family. Yeah, the twin sisters of Azura and Sephi passed at the same time. Ain't that a trip? Came in together and went out together, right? Huh, that's awesome. Both went home reeking their mama. Amazing. Ain't no such thing as YOLO family. You only live once. No, bruh. Oh, no. Oh, recompense. You gonna get what you get. You gonna get what you get, whether it be good or bad. Right? Verse 33. And in the years that followed, the people of Ma'in grew and matured as a people, and they became very strong in their knowledge of the Lord and in their care for one another. And they became very skilled in their use of the element of righteousness. And the Lord taught them to weave cloth. Y'all hear that? They became very skilled in their use of the element of righteousness. Israel, the more we learn, the more we mature as a people. Everybody, Jew and Gentile, the more we learn, the more we mature as a people. The element of righteousness, we got a lot to learn, family. But Israel, it's prophesied we're going to learn it. Huh? It's prophesied we're going to learn it well, well. You understand? Verse 54. Oh, my bad. Verse 34. And Enoch was strong in the Lord. As the men of wickedness from the valleys of Haleah became more bold, Enoch sought ways to protect the people. Y'all hear that? Enoch was always looking for new ways to protect his people. Enoch was and is a true shepherd, right? The Lord is teaching us these things right now for a reason. Enoch continued to go back to his altar and establish new things with the Ere Kodesh. We have a day of instruction every year, family. In fact, we're, praying for, we're preparing for the day of instruction right now. That's the next holy day. You feel me? This is, this is, this is the time of the year when the, the, the men of Abara, the, the high priest, the men out of the order of Melchizedek, go to their Kodesh after weeks, seven weeks to be exact, right? Remember, this is the Feast of Weeks, right? For seven weeks, they you know they're going and getting in the spirit seven weeks of seven trumpets getting ready to 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 make a declaration to the air kodeshi a different way that they can protect the righteous so that's coming up now so right now as a people we should be focused on the love and kindness of the most high how are ways the father is loving kindness it's a time to pray to look forward a time for the pray that the, 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 the ruach put it in your mind why so we can understand a way that we can protect our people with this loving kindness right Verse 35, and it came to pass that a large company of the wicked were seen to be approaching from the west toward the northern regions of Ma'in. And Enoch viewed their approach from the top of a high place and he prayed mightily to the Lord to save the people of the land. And the Lord said, get yourself down from here for their Kodesh are mourning and they are afraid. And Enoch went down away from the mountain and out upon the plain. And the whole of the mountains raised up from the south to north. Oh, <laughs> What? And the whole of the mountains raised up from the south to the north, and the earth shook, and the dust of the movement of the mountains burst forth mightily and filled the lofty places. And the company of the men of Haleah were scattered in fear, and a strong east wind descended down upon them with the clouds of dust, and it was the first such a dust storm to be observed upon the earth since Yasukai left Eden, and a great dread came upon the wicked. <laughs> Whoa, now, did y'all hear that? If y'all are reading along, did y'all see that? Enoch got news that the wicked was about to ride on his establishment. Enoch heard that the wicked people of Haleah wanted to do his village harm. 
Let's read that again. Let's start, we'll start verse 35 over. Watch this. And it came to pass that a large company of the wicked were seen to be approaching from the west toward the northern regions of Ma'in. And Enoch viewed their approach from the top of a high place and he prayed mightily to the Lord to save the people of the land. Enoch was righteous family. Benelim said Enoch saw the wicked coming to harm his people and Enoch prayed to the Lord. <laughs> what happened when Enoch prayed? Y'all know something on shake. When Enoch prays, what we read? And the Lord said, Get yourself down from here to the Eric Kodeshi. Um, get yourself down from here for the Eric Kodeshi are mourning, and they are afraid. And Enoch went down away from the mountains and out upon the plain. Okay, y'all, what happens when Enoch or when the Eric Kodeshi mourn and are afraid? I want y'all to pay attention here. What makes them mourn? What what makes the Eric Kodeshi mourn is when the righteous are being oppressed. Right, are being harmed, killed, put through things. The Eric Kadeshi mourn, right? And then when they get afraid, we about to find out what they do. Let's keep reading. And the whole of the mountains raised up from south to north, and the earth shook. What? Let's read that again. And the whole of the mountains raised up from south to north, and the earth shook. <laughs> The whole mountain raised up from the south side to the north side. I wonder what that looked like. You understand? And the earth shook. <laughs> Let's keep reading. And the dust of the movement of the mountains burst forth mightily and filled the lofty places. And the company of the men of Halea were scattered in fear. And a strong east wind descended down upon them with the clouds of dust. And it was the first such a dust storm to be observed upon the earth since Yasakai left Eden. And a great dread came upon the wicked. <laughs> the wicked was terrified, y'all. They didn't even know what hit them. This is showing us how much the Eric Kodeshi will protect the righteous when we operate in the sanctity of marriage. When we operate in the power of godliness, the Eric Kodeshi is waiting to protect us. Woo! You see why, um, do you see why Semihaza, Asael, the Decadarchy, the Fallen Watchers don't want to have nothing to do with the sanctity of marriage. They are warring against it. Look at the power it has. How about when Israel gets linked into their spiritual heritage? Woo! It's gonna be like a whole bunch of baby Enochs running around here. Real talk. Verse 38. And this event occurred when the wicked were conferring together to make their plans as to how to take the spoil from the from the people of Ma'in. Y'all hear that? They were planning on how to ride on Ma'in. Hey, y'all remember in the Bible, something similar happened. Similar happened. Y'all remember Ezekiel? I think it was 38. Gog and Magog. Remember they were going to go um, take spoils from the children of Israel? If you go read, go back and read that when you get time. That, that's proof in your Bible. How the Eric Kadeshi respond, right? How they respond when they are mourning and in fear. You feel me? Let's start verse 38 over, right? It said like this. And, and this event occurred when the wicked were conferring together to make their plans as how to take the spoil from the people of Ma'in. And from that day, it was said that the ground would shake in Halea if the wicked thought to come against Ma'in. Woo! <laughs> and this was also the first great and terrible earthquake since Gassachar and Kaffa left Eden. And from that day, the wicked viewed the violent shaking of the earth as a sign to them that God would punish and destroy man according to his delight and pleasure whenever he chose. <laughs> but that's how the wicked felt. That's how the wicked felt about Enoch, he said, about most of the lamb. Terrified. Because they had no understanding. And they try to teach that fear to us in these days. And not allow us to have understanding. The Most High said no. Superstitions, huh? They had no understanding of the Eric Kodeshi. The Holy Watchers, they didn't have no understanding of it, so they had superstitions. But we have the, we have that understanding now. Israel, the Lord is revealing to us the mysteries, and we are going to reveal it to the world. That's what our job is to do, Israel. As a nation, reveal the truth to the world to cause a great awakening, a great gathering, huh? Verse 40, and the ignorance of the wicked concerning the mourning of their Kodeshi over the sins of men was great, and the wicked durst not come against my Ma'in ever again, even until my Ma'in was fled. Yeah, it said my Ma'in was fled because it looked like my Ma'in as a whole was taken back to Eden. Hmm? Rapture. That crazy. Rapture. Woo! 
The wicked understood that much. They understood that much. Don't go against those people in that community. That's what they understood much, right? And that's how it's going to be in these last days, family. The wicked is going to fear the righteous. And they ain't even going to know why. It's already starting to happen. Huh? Verse 41. And it came to pass that all these things happened. And Yasekot and Kava returned to Eden. And 100 years passed away. And the welfare and happiness of the people of Ma'in grew in the abundance of it. And the people were blessed steadily as they learned to be virtuous and to huddle together. And to put their trust in the Lord. You see that? Praying without ceasing. What did the people of my end, which was ancient Zion, what did Enoch's people, the people of Zion learn that that kept them blessed? What they learned that kept them blessed? Let's read it again. And the people were blessed steadily as they learned to be virtuous and to huddle together and to put their trust in the Lord. Huh? As they learned to be virtuous and to huddle together and to put their trust in the Lord. Write that down. They learn to be virtuous and to huddle together, you know, community, and to put their trust in the Lord. Verse 42. And it came to pass in those days that a man named Shari came into the land, and he was of the fifth generation since Enoch, and he was a goodly young man who walked with most of the land, and he was a descendant of Methuselah, and he was a son of Shem. This Shire, Shire was a descendant from Methuselah. Remember, we learned earlier in this series that Methuselah is Enoch's son, who we know in the Bible as Methuselah. We will be dealing with Methuselah or Methuselah a little later in this series. So this Shire is also Shem's son. Interesting. Interesting. Let's keep reading about Shire. Verse 43. And he and all of his fathers dwelt in the land of Tawa, near the borders of Haleah, because of the waverness of Methuselah, and they dwelt at the headwaters of the Hades River, which is the same place where the brother of Jared stayed for the night, when Shema found her daughter, according to the writing of the brother of Jared. The writing of the brother of Jared family is the first and second books of Achi, right? Let's keep going. And this young man, Shari, fell at the feet of Enoch out of his great love for him, and he called him father. And Enoch had compassion on him, and he taught Shari in all of the ways of being a scribe of stone tablets. And the heart of Shari was tender and pure, and he was called Shari because he was a remnant of the family of Enoch that returned to him. And Shari was a great comfort to Edney, and he rehearsed to her all of the doings of the people of her son Methuselah. Remember last we heard, Edney hadn't seen her son Methuselah for a very long while, right? So she was getting the scoop right here. Verse 46, and it came to pass that Shari, who was also the fifth generation from Enoch, took one of the daughters of Aphaph to wife. And the Lord gave Shari a Urim and Thummim, and Baraka blessed it, and she prayed earnest prayers over Shari. So the Lord gave Shari a Urim and Thummim. So like Enoch Shari, so, so like Enoch Shari could see the histories, the true histories. And that dope, Shari had a urine too. That dope. Verse 47. And he made stone tablets after the manner of those in the possession of, en uh, possession of Enoch. And he had correspondence with his father Shem. And he took the heavenly tablets to him and stayed with him a while. And he instructed his father in all things concerning the tablets. So Shem's son, Shari, taught Shem about the tablets made by Enoch. Y'all go watch the video we have titled, we, we titled Urim and Thummim Part 1, y'all. We talked about those, some of those tablets in that video right there. It is the Remembrance of Moses playlist. That's where you can, um, you can get that episode at. Also, you can get it in the, um, in the clear eyes, no visine playlist. Let's keep going. Verse 48. And thus the one, the water tablet found a way to go to Noah, the father of Shem. But it was called the tablet of Bedal by Enoch. And Noah used it to divide the earth according to the lives of men. And he did it with the waters of the great deep. And just before the flood, the people of Ma'in were taken back to Eden, for Enoki said took them. See that? Just before the flood, the people of Ma'in were taken back to Eden, for Enoki said took them. Interesting. It just let us know that Noah used the water tablet to divide the lives of men. It said he divided the lives of men with the waters of the great deep. <laughs> Is there more to the flood? Is there more to the flood story than we thought? 
Father willing, we're going to find that out one of these days coming soon, right? Just before the flood, the people of Ma'in were taken back to Eden. It said that Noki said took them. Interesting. So much more information to dive into, y'all. <laughs> but we go. Verse 49. And it came to pass that Shehari dwelt in the holy city unto the 339th year of Enoch. Y'all hear that? The 339th year of Enoch. Okay. Stop verse 49 over. And it came to pass that Shari dwelt in the holy city unto the 339th year of Enoch. And in that year he departed toward the south, beyond the borders of Rapshalash. And no righteous man had gone before into that quarter of the land. And there he found a vast marshland to dwell in that was much like the land of Ma'in. And it had two rivers and a saltwater sea. And because the Lord had given him a Urim, they named the valley of the marshes the land of Ur. What? Whoa, now. Y'all remember that from the Bible, land of Ur? Hmm. Because it's, it was named that because Shari went there. And, and because Shari had a Urim, it was named the land of Ur. Hmm. Whoa. Okay. So Shari had the Urim, and they named that valley of the marshes what? They named the valley of the marshes the land of Ur. Okay. Let's keep reading. And any of those who had previously lived there, those who had previously lived in the land of Ur, right, had fled at the breakup of the Society of Seku. Y'all, we read about the Society of Seku a few episodes ago. They were the ancient Masons, the original Masons. <laughs> The original Masonic order. You dig? So everyone who used to live in the, in the land of Ur fled the area when the society of Seku was broke up. Right? Verse 51. And the people of Shari were called the people of Uma. And in the times that followed the flood, the people called the Chaldeans set upon them and took possession of their land and made the people of Uma their slaves. And the Chaldeans called Shari Arfaxad. Ooh, y'all remember that name? According to the manner of their own language. <laughs> there we go, Arfaxad. Huh? That's from the Bible. Let's go get it. Gen Genesis 11, 11. And, Sh and Shem lived after he begot Arfaxad 500 years and begot sons and daughters. See that? And Shem lived after he begot our Faxad. That our Faxad is Shari, Shem's son. So we are starting to see who Shari's descendants are. Abraham, right? And let's keep reading. Verse 52. And it was in this way that Shari became a remnant of the holy city of Ma'in. And the children of, his, of this man were obliged as slaves to become the guardians of the idols of the Chaldeans. And the Lord took the urine from Shari for safekeeping. And no man knew what had ha become of it. Boom! Y'all see that? The guardian of the idols. What did Abraham burn down? <laughs> Let's keep reading though. Verse 53. And it was known that Shari had, had seen by Urim a vast people who would someday come to dwell in the lands of Tuwa. And he prayed mightily for them. And he left tablets deposited in the earth. And because of the wickedness of man, they had been kept back from becoming known. Shari was a good brother. He buried tablets in the earth hoping that ones would find it and repent one day. Huh? Ones may still find them. Right? Verse 54. Now before these days, so before the days of Shari and his descendants, right? Let's read. During the hundred years after Yasekad and Kava returned to Eden. So this is during the hundred years period after Yasekad and Kava, Adam and Eve went back to Eden. In that time frame, what happened? The people learned, we're going to keep reading here. The people learned how to organize themselves to perform their labors. And it was necessary for them to thrust themselves into their labors with vigor at certain times of the year. Remember, Ma'in, Zion was being established at that time. They were learning how to operate as a righteous community. And in some times of the year, the work is a lot harder than others, like harvest season. Ari and I, we've been doing this wilderness living for the past two years. You feel me? So we know about the vigor of harvest season. So Enoch and his community was in one of those hard times of the year, right? Verse 55. And it came to pass that Enoch was in the drying yard where they dried fish. And he labored until he was exhausted. And he was in his 239th year. And Enoch slept in the drying yard in the midst of his labors. And any brought him food and comforted him. And at this season, all of the people labored with much effort in order to pro provide for themselves. 
harvest, right? And it came to pass that in the night, in the press of these laborers, the Lord came to Enoch as he lay asleep in the midst of the drying poles of fish. And he awoke Enoch gently. And Enoch said, Lord, I'm here for you. And that's where we're going to stop for the night, man. Yeah. The Lord is about to send Enoch on another task. That next task is the division of days, the calendar. You can go to our playlist title, Enoch's True Calendar. We're dealing with the rest of this chapter there. One holy day at a time. Yeah. Man, that was a fire episode right there. I just love talking about uh, our histories, man. I tell you that all the time. Yasser Khan and Kava, Adam and Eve went back to Eden. Just reading this book early in this series and seeing what they went through when they had to leave Eden. Man, that was amazing. What they went through watching some of their children and great grandchildren go off and become super wicked. Right? Seeing the covenants they, that they made with the Father, the promises Moses gave them to see them finally accomplish their task. Man. They wanted nothing more than to go back to Eden with Enoki said, Mozart and their righteous children. It's motivation knowing we can accomplish that goal as well. Huh? Man, y'all. Man, y'all. Oh, praises, yo. Are you focused on your road back? You remember, remember it's a, um, the road, the way is thin. It's a narrow gate. It's just, it, it, few find it. Narrow pathway. You did. Yasukai and Kava found it, and we got to read today about them and what happened when they found it. All praises, man. Remember, man, we we getting ready. We getting ready for um the day of instruction. It's coming. It's coming. Y'all stay tuned. Y'all, we got um on the Enoch's True Counter playlist. We got an episode on there talking about the day of instruction. Y'all go and check that out. Get an understanding on that. Get an understanding on our culture, our heritage, family. You did. All praises, man. We're getting ready for that, y'all. Stay tuned, man. As always, y'all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. June first, y'all head out to D Town if y'all close in the area. June first, y'all seen a little commercial thing in the beginning, man. We in we in D Town June first. Big concert, big concert. Y'all come through. Especially y'all found these books, man. Let's 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 meet each other, man. Let's see each other face to face. You did. Let's plan, plot, and strategize face to face. Real talk. Man, y'all, as always, I pray this message was for somebody. It is. I praise the Kahi, which is the Holy Spirit, the Huwai Kadash, which gives us all Kakamuai. All praises to Anoki said. That's all praises to the great I am loving kindness, Ahaya Ki said. I praise the Most of the Lamb. That's our Savior. Yash. Remember, family, we got to love the Most High with all our mind, all our heart. And all our might and to love our brothers and sisters like the most high loves them see them like the father sees them and hear them like the father hears them feel for them like the father feels for them it's your boy peace real judah man let go Just living no longer flippers, but still.
still get Thanksgiving. Uh, Praise to the high book, cause now I'm living. Why these so called gangsters are dressing like Richard Simmons? I walk around town like a nightlight. I focus on the after, not the nightlight. You trying to be a boss, I won't be Christ like. Hold up, though, let me talk to the sisters, though. I love real women, cause they dress like that. You know, with the dress and the hair wrap like that. She don't dress like a triple, but she can get like that. For her king of sound, I when I rap like that. Only her king knows she got bad like that. He got game, but only to her when he mad like that. Yeah. Can't keep people's bound. Nah, nah, they ain't no, but look, look, sister Irene, God show them how the sisters of Zion do when they do what they do, do what they do. 